Let's all have a look at one of the most incredible pieces of technology our society has invented. Something that has completely reshaped our world and our lives. The smartphone. This is my smartphone. Uh, it's approximately five years old, but it still works perfectly fine. And this leads me to my question. How old is your smartphone? One year, two years? Well, on average, in rich countries, the average lifetime of a smartphone is estimated to be between one and a half to two and a half years. But this is only a tiny fraction this smartphone will have an impact on the planet. So let's look at the complete life cycle of a smartphone. It is built from carbon taken from the oil industry. Silver, copper, gold from the mines all over the world. Rare metals, mainly coming from northern Russia. And finally, lithium, which comes from South America or Tibet. These materials are extracted, refined, and shaped into this miracle of technology that is our final smartphone. And then you use this smartphone for two years, you do many interesting things with it, and then it's trash. Is that all? No, unfortunately not. Depending on how and where you discarded your smartphone, its impact on the planet will remain for centuries. If we look at all electronic devices together, the world's population generates 45 million metric tons of electronic waste each year. This is equivalent to 4,500 Eiffel Towers in a single year. But the worst part is only 20% of that mass is actually properly taken care of in a recycling process. Which means that the rest is either burnt, releasing toxic chemicals and ashes, or placed in landfill, where it slowly diffuses water poisoning chemical for centuries. Hopefully you will say, I'm a good person and I brought my smartphone back to the store for recycling. I apologize, but I have here to debunk some myth about recycling. You can't make a smartphone out of a recycled smartphone. You can't make a simple plastic bottle out of recycled plastic. And even glass, which is said to be 100% recyclable, in practice, you only incorporate 90% of recycled glass into a new glass bottle. Which means that our society takes material from the earth, use it a first time in an application of high added value, then sometime reuse it a second time through recycling in an application of a lower value, and then it's trash. So recycling displaces the problem, but it doesn't solve anything. Or future product shouldn't be recyclable. They should be biodegradable. But what is it that we actually call biodegradability? So let's examine why, in millions of years of life on Earth, we observe almost no trace of all the beings that were before. And in three generations of consumer society, we have saturated our planet with trash that will take millennia to absorb. In order to understand why this is, I will forget about my smartphone for a little while, and I will focus on two abundantly produced material, one by human, the other by nature, plastic and wood. Wood is fully biodegradable, which means that when this piece of wood falls on the ground, Millions of microbes will colonize it and digest it by taking the carbon and the minerals away. And then these microbes, in their turn, will fall on the ground and they feed the next generation of plants. Plastic, like most human-made products, 
has been designed for performance, durability, at the lowest cost possible, not taking into account their end of life. So in order to understand why wood is biodegradable and plastic is not, we will look at our two materials from three different perspectives. Atomic composition, physical structure, and the where they are synthesized. So let's start by doing an extreme zoom in and look at our two materials at the atomic level. Plastic is made from oil, which means it mainly contains carbon and hydrogen. And in these materials, carbons are bound to carbon, which are bound to carbon, which are bound to carbon, forming extremely long carbon chains with few or no oxygen elements inside. In wood, in contrast, every carbon is bound to an oxygen atom. And wood also contains minerals, phosphates, for the microorganisms to grow on wood as their sole food source. And this one-to-one -one carbon to oxygen ratio is extremely important because living microorganism machinery can only efficiently process carbon when it's bound to an oxygen atom. In order to biodegrade plastic, microbes have to attach oxygen onto the carbon chain before being capable of taking the carbon away. And this process requires oxygen, but also a lot of energy and put yourself in the shoes of a degrading microorganism. It is hard to breathe under the ocean or deeply buried in a pile of trash. So our first conclusion today is, if we wish our material to fully biodegrade, they should contain as much oxygen as carbon, but this would also contain all the necessary minerals and nitrogen for the microorganisms to grow on this material as their sole food. So now let's zoom out and look at our two material through an optic microscope. In plastic, plastic fibers are tightly packed one to another, forming a continuously extremely solid structure. Wood, in contrast, is fully porous. This difference is crucial because in order to fully biodegrade a material, microbes have to penetrate it. And they can easily penetrate wood, but not plastic. So our second conclusion is that if we wish our materials to be truly biodegradable, they should be porous or become porous after use. So let's zoom out even more and look at our two material the way they are synthesized. Plastic is made from petrochemistry and these gigantic plants use high pressure, high temperature, solvents and artificial metal catalyzer to produce these materials. Wood is synthesized in water at low temperature with natural catalyzing enzymes. And this difference is extremely important because in the harsh condition of industrial chemistry, atoms bind together in a way nature could never do and thus cannot easily undo. So our third conclusion is that if we wish our material to be truly biodegradable, they should only be made with bonds that can break at low temperature with natural catalyzing enzymes. Now I have a question for you. Next time you eat out, which one do you choose? Now that we understand what is wrong with the product that we currently consume, I can tell you that it is possible to do much better. I was an enthusiastic student in chemistry 10 years ago and when I realized everything that I told you I almost quit and I began to search for a better way to use my energy to contribute to the future of this planet. But then I discovered that there were people trying to invent a new kind of chemistry. A chemistry that produces molecules that are meant to be biodegradable. A chemistry that takes atoms from nature rather than from oil. 
a chemistry that operates in water at low temperature. A chemistry that uses sugar-eating microbes to produce chemicals the same way you brew beer. I immediately joined, and after my PhD, I started my company, Abolis Biotechnologies, to help current industry to transition from their conventional production methods and conventional products to sustainable ones. Now that we understand these rules, we see what is wrong with what the products that we currently make, and we see how a sustainable chemical industry is possible. And the good news is that this journey has already started. You all had in hands compostable plastic bags. It is not perfect because compostable doesn't mean it easily biodegrades in the open environment, but it's much better than your old plastic bags. And there are several companies out there actively working to further increase its biodegradability. Clean chemicals are also entering our lives through home care and skincare products. Bio-based skincare products is a big trend on the market today. And bio-based home care products, such as dishwashing soap, floor or bathroom cleaning products, are already available from the shelf of our supermarket. And the good news is, these products are not necessarily more expensive nor less efficient than the conventional ones. But this is just the beginning, because everything that we have in hand today have a finite lifespan. They should become biodegradable after use. Wooden house could last for centuries when lived in, but biodegrades in a matter of years otherwise. Ultimately, we need to have all our products biodegradable. Biodegradable cars, biodegradable paints, biodegradable solar panel, and even biodegradable smartphone. This is extremely difficult. But it is a fantastic era for chemists and a gigantic opportunity for the industry to innovate and reinvent themselves and massively invest in the clean chemistry and the clean energy that we need. Let's be positive. A sustainable society with sustainable product is possible, but we have to fight for it. And we, citizens of the world, we have the power to make that change happen. But for this, we have to dangle the carrot and hold the stick. As responsible consumers, we should only buy responsible products from responsible stores. This is the carrot. Meanwhile, as citizens, we have to constantly demand our industry and our politicians to remove toxic chemicals from our lives while massively investing in the clean energy and the clean chemistry that we desperately need. Well, there will be some people that will argue that sustainable society will be more expensive. This is true. Sustainable product may be more expensive than their conventional counterpart. But the price that we pay at the store today do not encompass for all the social and environmental costs all products causes at the moment of the extraction and after its lifespan. Some other people will argue that this will be extremely expensive and that we cannot afford for this transition. Well, let me tell you this. Central banks all over the world have created trillions of euros of additional currency these last three years. Europe have more than double the amount of euros created in three years. And 90% of this money went directly to the financial system for speculation. Our governments every year gives $200 billion of direct subsidies to the oil industry. And this is a question of where, as citizens, we want our money to go. In their last report, the climate expert group says that we only have two years ahead before our climate and ecosystem gets irreversibly damaged. 
this shouldn't be just a protest sign. Each purchase we make, the way we choose to live our life, can help save the environment. But it starts with 8 billion individual choices. And now it's time for yours. Thank you very much.